Hello, Lawrence Township students and families. This video was created for third grade during the week of May 4th. Our focus will be humanities, and this is lesson number one. In this lesson, we are going to look at how plants grow almost everywhere on the planet. Plants are so important to life on Earth that without them, we could not survive. They have survival needs just like we do. Let's take a look at different types of plants and what they need to survive. For the next few weeks, we will be studying both nonfiction and fiction texts to help us understand why plants are such an important part of life here on Earth. Our learning targets for today include asking and answering questions to demonstrate understanding of a text, referring explicitly to the text as the basis for your answers. We will write effectively for a variety of purposes, and we will construct an argument that plants and animals have internal and external structures that function to support their survival, growth, behavior, and reproduction. For task number one, we will watch a video about plants. If you have a device at home, you can click on this link, but I'm going to take you there right now so that we can watch it together. Coming soon to a garden near you, a plant's life. Welcome to the garden with plants full of life. Trees with leaves, flowers that bloom bright. Good morning, world. Save the plants and the flowers. We're happy in sunshine. We love rain showers. I use my roots to reach below the soil. My roots are like straws, drinking minerals and water deep. Underneath the plants and the trees, they bring me the nutrients I love and need. My roots are why I don't break or fall over. Even in the wind, I stand tall like a soldier once. I've had my water. I'm strong in my place. My stem helps the sunlight hit my face. A flower stem is soft. A tree trunk is hard. It keeps me straight. Delivers water to my parts. I appreciate the help I get from my leaves. The leaves make the food that every plant and tree needs. It's like a large factory. The sun provides power to the plants, the trees, and also the flowers. Give me lots of sunlight and don't forget the water. Everything I need to shine bright and grow taller. Plants have roots. Please. Many have fruit, flowers, seeds, a plant's life, sort of like yours and mine. It needs nutrients, water, and sunshine. Plants have roots, stems, leaves. Many have fruit, flowers, seeds, a plant's life, sort of like yours and mine. It needs nutrients, water, and sunshine. Plants want to make more plants all over the globe, so they make it spread seeds for new plants to grow. Seeds can be hard like the pit of a peach or soft like in the strawberries you eat. Animals eat fruit and spread seeds, and other seeds float out on the breeze. Maple tree seeds spin like a helicopter, and dandelion seeds float away. They go farther. Plants make seeds in the flower, but they need pollination to give them power. That's why flowers attract bees. They pollinate the flower, which becomes something sweet. That's fruit. It pulls the seeds, it's the circle of life. Take it from me, some plants don't flower like moss or ferns. Those are older than the T-Rex, now you heard. Plants have roots, stems, leaves. Many have fruit, flowers, seeds. A plant's life, sort of like yours and mine. It needs nutrients, water, and sunshine. Plants have roots, stems, leaves. Many have fruit, flowers, seeds. A plant's life, sort of like yours and I just love those vocabulary videos. Look through and make sure that you understand the vocabulary words that go along with our video with the parts of a plant. Students will be successful when they have watched the video and can understand the 10 vocabulary words that were introduced in the video. For task number two, students will read the passage Miss Johnson's Plant Experiment to begin to learn about what plants need to survive. First, they will read the passage, or you can listen to me read it with you at the end of this video. Then read it again or multiple times to practice your fluency. Remember, fluency is when we read it like we speak and don't have too many pauses or stops. Reread it again to understand what you have read. Share your thinking with someone in your family. 
Then we will write a five to seven sentence summary to explain what you learned about what plants need to have in order to survive. Be sure to include details from the text to explain your thinking. Students will be successful when they read the passage fluently and write a five to seven sentence paragraph to explain what plants need to survive. This is our text that we will read, Miss Johnson's Plant Experiment, and as you can see here, it's about three pages long. Right till there. On this page, you will write your five to seven sentence paragraph summary on the lines below. Be sure to include proper capitalization, punctuation, and spell all third grade words correctly. When you're finished, make sure to go back and revise and edit your work to make sure that it's perfect before you submit it to your teacher. For task number three, students will complete their daily language review, or DLR. In order to be successful, they will correctly answer at least five out of six boxes on their DLR. Here we can see our DLR for the day. First, we need to find a word that means the same as collects. That's like a synonym. For the second box, it says that we need to find the antonym for the word shallow in the sentence. An antonym means the opposite. For question number three, we need to find the correctly spelled word that fits in the sentence. For box number four, we want to find the word that has the same ending sound as the underlined word. For box number five, we need to find one word that fits into both sentences. And finally, we're going to read the sentence in the sixth box and tell if that is a fact or an opinion. The next few slides provide you with visuals and support to ensure that you are successful with each task. Let's read our text for today together. Miss Johnson's Plant Experiment. Miss Johnson, a second grade teacher, reached deep into her canvas bag and pulled out two plants. She placed the plants on a table at the front of the room. She asked her class to gather around the table to look at the plants and describe what they saw. They look the same, Helena said. The leaves are green. Aaron added. They're standing straight up, Lee noted. Miss Johnson asked them to touch the soil and tell her about it. The soil is moist and it's dark brown, Mia observed. The soil is getting stuck under my fingernails, Teresa said. Miss Johnson placed one plant in a sunny spot on the windowsill and the other on the floor in a dark corner of the classroom. She asked for four volunteers. Each volunteer was responsible for watering the plant on the windowsill once a week. Miss Johnson promised her class the plants would be part of an important lesson the following month. Four weeks later, Miss Johnson brought the plants back to the table and invited the class to describe them again. They don't look like each other anymore, Helena said excitedly. One plant is green and has some new bright green leaves, and the other plant has more yellow and brown leaves than green leaves. Nina explained. One plant is standing straight up and the other one is bent over, Lenny added. Miss Johnson then asked the students to touch the soil and tell her about it. It's moist and dark brown around this plant, Grace said. It's very dry and light brown around this plant, Max described. Miss Johnson explained, plants are alive. They respond to where they live. What are the differences between where I put the plants and how we cared for them? You put one in a dark corner and the other one on the windowsill where there's a lot of light, Ellie replied. We watered the plant on the windowsill, but we didn't water the plant in the corner of the room, Aaron said. That's right. Which plant is growing and healthy, Miss Johnson asked. Several students replied that the plant on the windowsill they watered was the one which was growing and healthy. You're right, Miss Johnson exclaimed, proud of her students. Then she continued, I wanted you to see for yourselves that plants depend on light and water to grow and be healthy. Did you know that plants breathe? They have little openings on their leaves that look like tiny mouths, but they are too small to see without a microscope. When we breathe, we breathe in oxygen. Plants breathe in carbon dioxide. Plants take in carbon dioxide from the air and use it to build their leaves, stems, and roots. Plants also take in water. This is why we need to water plants so they will grow. They use their roots to suck up water into their bodies and the little openings on their leaves to breathe in carbon dioxide. Once they have water and carbon dioxide, 
plants need light. Leaves are made up of a bunch of tiny cells. Inside the cells are very little things called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are what make leaves green, and they are also what turn the carbon dioxide, water, and light into sugar and oxygen. The sugar is food for the plants. These plants release the oxygen into the air, which humans and many animals breathe in. What do plants need to grow and be healthy? Miss Johnson asked her class. They need light and water, the class replied. Let's play, place both plants on the windowsill where they will get lots of light and grow. Who would like to volunteer to water the plants? All of Miss Johnson's students raised their hands. If needed, watch this video again as you work on the tasks in this lesson. Please be reminded to submit your work to your classroom teacher.